Hey, this is JP from John Paul Music UK, and in this video, we're going to have a look at Quantilly. Hey guys, thanks for looking at the channel. If you've never been here before, my channel is all about music tech and looping. Please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps the channel grow. And if you like my videos, please subscribe as well. So in this video, we're going to be having a look at Quantaloop. Quantaloop is a four pedal looper uh, that looks like a pedal board. And it's $14.99 on the App Store. And it's been around for a little while, but it's built for live performance. There's some really nice features in here. So we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you the basics and how you can get started with Quantaloop. So when you first load Quantaloop, you're gonna see this. This is the four track looper. It's called a live quantizing looper. And there's loads of settings in here that you can set up and you can play and you can move around. So when you dive into this, this is a pedal based looper, but touchscreen. So it looks very, very familiar if you've ever had a pedal based looper before, but there's some great advantages here. So what we've got is four tracks and we've also got input effects. We've got track effects. We've got a dub mode. We've got a start stop all. We've got a rhythm section, and then also at the bottom, you can see where your input and outputs are. Now, you may have noticed there's also an effect section that you can control. So, the three effects inputs that I've got are not the effects that come with Quantaloop, that's actually another app. So, we're using Inter App Audio here, and we can actually pull effects from another app straight in. <laughs> So first of all, we've got our four tracks. We've got track one to four, and you can see there we've got a track one to four screen as well, almost like a little screen for each one. At the very, very top, we've got our phrase. Also, if I go to load, we've got loads of different phrases we could load. We could save different banks of phrases. You can even add more banks if you want to. This is just the default, which is really clever. And then we've got store. So if you hit store, it's save or save as, and you can save it as a new phrase. When you go into the phrase at the very top there, we've got edit, basically change the style so it's set as parallel as standard but what you can also do is you can do serial or serial master this is very very similar to pedal based loopers uh, where you can actually have it say like a track one is a verse track two is the chorus track three is the bridge so next to phrase edit you've got the input control so you can see my voice going up and down there in green and then we've got the name of the track and we've also got metronome there and then based on whether you uh, preset the beat uh, you can do a preset for auto record so it just hears your voice so you don't have to touch it or when you tap it and then tap it again it'll figure out the bpm on the right hand side at the top we've got tempo so we can actually tap the tempo in and we can also sync it as well or force it to sync with um, some other app with Ableton Link. 
and then you've got the rhythm so with a rhythm bit you've got just a metronome there but you also can use it with beat buddy and you can also use an instrument plugin which is really powerful we've got a pan and a volume for rhythm as well underneath the top bar as i say you've got your four tracks there each one has an edit pan and volume control which is really really nice we go into edit and it gives us track settings so we can actually set the bars we just got it as manual at the moment we can even label them so you could always label say this one as the drums or the next one as the vocals and again you can change that per preset then you've got the song parts you can say all parts or there's a part a b c or d and you've also got one shot tracking as well the tempo sync is just set to follow so you set it and then follow it and then that's fine and then you've even got overdub decay uh, as well and if you scroll down a little bit it shows you what it's going to do where you play your record start your stop mode and your dubbing mode so all of those are set to global at the moment now to get into them what we have to do is we have to go to the phrase edit which is at the very very top and we can actually play with the style here so play is on the beat stop is instant overdub is instant undo and redo instant and then record start is on the loop start so it actually won't record until you get back to the very first phrase which you can then change i can change that to beat or measure or with overdub i could say instant or at the loop end which is really clever and then you've even got um, dub after record which i've got to set yes so i want it to just keep overdubbing and overdubbing and you can even do dub overdub decay and this is where you can also do auto record so if you do auto record it'll figure out a trigger level when you start singing or playing and then it'll start recording straight away so each one of these four tracks they're pretty much the same so edit pan and volume for each one of the four and then underneath that we've got input effects dub mode start stop rhythm and then track effects now with input effects i can hold it down and when you hold it down this is input effect for input number one which is my microphone but then also i can actually pick something from that so if let me just eject that right now so the built-in effects we've got a looper bypass which is really handy and also we've got transpose so you can transpose it maybe an octave down for a bass sound or an octave up if you want to have like a sort of like high pitched noise you've got reverb and delay and you've also got compressor and a gate now this is where i really like this because it's really simple to use you've already got effect apps in your ipad we can go to audio units and i've got there another one which is a audio rack effects and uh, for voice i've got apps so i've got a couple of apps that we can use and what you've used recently so i'm going to go to audio units i'm going to use that one and then it says what's the target so the target is my input number one so obviously that's the way it's going to be affected from and that's it i can actually then turn it on hello 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 i can turn it off and then there's a little bit of effect there so this one which is effect number one you'll see at the very bottom of the page you've got effect number one so if i then tap on that it brings that app into it so i'm not going to dive over to another app it's not going to switch around it actually overlays it on the looper so i never leave the looper i can actually change the effects live whilst looping i really like this i think it's really clever so then this is the actual app layout for this app so then i can go into the app i can actually change this over so i can go down to say the deeper voice and i can change that and then that's set done it's really really simple so now if i turn it on it's saved it as the deeper voice and then the next one along can be something completely different. So that one's a, a little bit of a, a brighter room. And this one has a delay on it. Hello, 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 hello. So the way I've also got this set up is just tap to loop and then it'll figure it out. And we've also got what's called dub mode. So when it's already dubbing uh, on dub mode, you can then tap it again and it'll come out of that. And then you can double tap to stop. If you're out of dub mode, you can just single tap each of these pedals and then it'll start and stop individually. So I'm going to do another one. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So you can see it's going straight into dub mode there. I've already tapped it again just so I can talk to you without putting the loop in. So if I want to stop this and I'm in dub mode, I've just got to double tap it and it'll stop. Single tap and it'll start again. If I'm out of dub mode, then I can just single tap and then single tap and then it'll stop automatically. The reason you'd have dub mode is because when we go into dub mode, a single tap will obviously overdub it.
The other thing you can do is you can undo and redo. So an undo is holding down on the pedal. And that'll take that last loop off. So hold it down again, that's a redo, and it'll put it back on. And these are just duplicated between track one, two, three, and four. So the next button along, right in the middle, is start, stop. So very simply, it's a start, stop all. And I can hold that down to clear all the tracks. Now the really nice thing about that is when you hold it down, it doesn't play the tracks for like a second or a second and a half, it just erases them, which is really nice. So you finished a track, you want to just hold it down, erase it all, but you want to keep all your settings. You don't want to go to another uh, phrase. You want to keep it on that phrase, it's quite nice. So the next one along is rhythm. And with rhythm, you've got a couple of options. So this is just set to a metronome mic now. And we can just tap it on and off. So we can have that on whilst we're um, using uh, loops. So so if you want to have your rhythm in time, you can do that with a metronome, which is nice. Now, if we go into edit in the top right hand corner there, we can change this. So the metronome is the built in one. Beat Buddy is the little Beat Buddy pedal you can buy, uh, which creates a uh, drum beat for you, and you can sync that to Quantaloop. The other one is Instrument Plugin, and we can actually grab any of the uh, audio units or apps that you've got uh, that you may use, which also create a metronome. So you can have that as the rhythm track for your loops. The other thing you can do as well is you've got default, you can add a bank as well, uh, just like you can add a bank with phrases. But also the rhythm settings, once you've picked that, you can say, well, start on play, uh, on, off, or just with a count in, and you can say start on record, off, on, or with a count in, and then you can say stop after record or stop on global, and it's very, very versatile. The next one along is track effects. Now these are different to input effects. Input effects obviously affect the input, like the microphone or a guitar. The track effects actually affect the whole track, and you can see that it says hold to assign. I've got a couple set up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold down on one and get rid of it, and again, you can grab a couple of things. So we've got the built-in ones, we've got mute audio, we've got fade in and out, tape stop, We've got reverse, half speed, double speed, transpose, uh, reverb and delay, compression and gate. So I'm gonna use tape stop. And then I can say tape stop will fade out in six seconds. So what I'm gonna do is let me just hit start stop. <laughs> so it's a really nice effect there. So it actually like stopping a tape. Or what we can do is we can hold that down and we can change that. So we can get rid of that one. We can say fade in and fade out. And I can change how many seconds that is again. So we'll start that again. And you just tap which track you want to fade out. And that starts fading out. One thing you must be aware of is make sure you're out of dub mode. Uh, make sure that dub mode isn't on, otherwise if you tap it, it'll just start overdubbing. And track effects won't work with your fade. With things like transpose and reverse, which I've got set up here, you just turn them on and it instantly does it. Let me show you. <laughs> And this is reverse. And you can see that's reversing. You can see the bar going the other way. Just tap it again to turn it off. I'll just stop that. So it depends on which track effect you're using. So whether you're using fade, you have to tell it which tracks you want to fade, which I think is really cool. You could fade out the drums and then you've just got harmonies at the end and you could fade them out as well. Or uh, if you're using the tape stop, you could tell it obviously tape stop one thing, but keep everything else going. But with things like transpose and reverb, obviously you can hold that down and we can say what it affects. So therefore we can say, well, affect all the tracks or just affect one of them. One of the other features of Quantiloop, you may have noticed that there's two tiny little buttons next to track three and track four. What we can do is we can actually change these to something else. So what I can do is I can actually have that as an undo redo button. Or what I can do is I can have it as a start and stop button. This is really clever because what this means is I'm not going up at the top. And then if you're using a MIDI foot controller, say like uh, IK Multimedia Blueboard or the FCB 1010, I could actually tell it to be these pedals. So I can actually change these and I can actually have that as say input effect number one. So as these are going, 
You can see as I tap it there, you can see that the, the, the effect turns on. One, two, three. Hello, hello. I can change this to something else, so I can say start, stop. And it's right there. And you can do the same with track number four as well. So you can have a two-track looper with two other buttons and assign those buttons to do something else. Or you can just have it as a four-track looper as well. Right at the very bottom of the screen, you will see our little commands and controls here. So we've got input, MIDI in and out, output, and then effects one, two, and three. So if I go to input, we get a nice little mixer, and you can see my microphone going in there. But what you can also do as well is we can actually import something that's like a physical input, like a microphone, uh, and we can have a look at that. So mic stereo left and right. Or what we can do is we can have an instrument, and we can grab that again from audio unit for app, or what we had as recent, or you can use Audiobus source. So if you've got anything through Audiobus, then you can push it through. So get it onto Audiobus, and then Quantaloop will see it, and then you can bring it in. What's really nice with the inputs is I can actually dictate which inputs come into where. So I could say not two, three, and four, and then with that one, I want that to be on two. So say that's the guitar. I can bring the guitar in on two, and the input on one, and isolate them. The next one along is MIDI, so MIDI in and out, and we can always send the clock if you want to, so this could be the master. So we've got virtual MIDI, we've got network MIDI, and then also if you've got any apps that obviously will send and receive MIDI, so I've got one there which is Audio Kit Synth 1, then that will receive MIDI and then we can change the timings of things like the delays, the oscillators, really, really quickly. The next one is out. And this is the output, and we've got things like the main output, we can have monitor output, we've got rhythm main out, post faders, and we can go through those, and you've got the individual tracks there. If you had a multi-out unit, I've got a two out at the moment, but if you had a multi-out unit, you could then send them to different outs, again, for a mixer or for a PA, so it could be individually mixed. The last three, as you can see here, are the effects, and they're where you can bring those effects straight in. I'm just using one app at the moment, which is the Voice Rec Effects app, which is a really nice app for voice. If I wanted to change that, I change that here where it says Input Effects, I just hold it down, I can get rid of that one, and then I can tell it which one I want to use, whether it's internal. So let's use one of the internal ones. So let's just go to uh, Transpose, and that's there. So I don't need to access any controls with that one, so therefore you'll see that input two and three are there at the bottom, but input one is gone because this is internal. Straight away. So if I hold that down and then I get rid of that one and I go back to the audio effects, you can then see that's the audio effect. So I can change that, say, to the super bright, for example. And this is just the uh, voice rack effects actually working internally in Quantaloop. One nice thing about Quantaloop is there is a help section, uh, just like there are with other apps. So top right hand corner, you can see there is a question mark. If you tap this, you get all of this. So you can see where your presets are, your face settings, your rhythm guide, the track panels, the input panels, uh, the input effects, the tracks, everything. And then right in the middle there, there is a user manual. If you click that, that is the full user manual and that will take you through everything you need to know for Quantaloop. So that's my overview of Quantaloop. It's a really versatile app. If you are looking for like a hardware looper, but you don't want to shell out all that money for a hardware looper, but you've already got an iPad and you've got an audio interface, this is $14.99 on the App Store, and I think it's really powerful. If you marry this with a MIDI controller, either a foot switch, or if you're using something like a blue board or anything like that, I think this could be really, really useful in a live environment. It's built for live use, and just being able to personalize every single phrase, I think it takes it to the next level. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. And if you like some of my other videos, please subscribe to the channel as well. And if you've got any questions regarding Quantaloop or how to get running with it, please obviously leave them in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.